Now, the European Union's chief negotiator for Brexit, Michael Bernier, has urged the UK to send its negotiating position on key issues and pay the divorce bill. The body is reportedly expected to demand up to 60 billion euros from the UK as part of Brexit negotiations. On Tuesday, Britain's Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson told the House of Commons that the EU was demanding extortionate sums from Britain. While well, visiting professor at the Policy Institute, King's College, London, Andrew McLeod, joins me now via Skype to discuss this very issue. Good to have you here on The World Now. So what do you Good make afternoon. of this uh, uh, situation between Brexit, between Britain and the EU? Do you see it as anything palatable? Look, I, I think the uh, rubber is now hitting the road in the negotiating period. I think one of the problems with the political leadership in Britain over the last 12 months is that they've been assuming that the negotiating position that they wish will be the negotiated outcome. And what the British are now having to face is that the negotiated outcome will be an agreement. That means the Germans, the French, the Europeans need to agree, and it's not going to be an easy negotiation. And the British are only just starting to come to terms with the fact that they're not going to get everything they want. It's going to be a very, very difficult divorce. And why would it, why would it be so difficult? Why is it so difficult for them to have what they want? What is, what is holding them back? Well, what the British wanted was their cake and eat it too. We want to leave without suffering any real cost. And from the European side, they can't afford to visibly have Britain leave without a cost. There needs to be a cost. If there's not, the European Union is likely to fragment, as other countries would say, well, if Britain can leave, not pay any cost, but still get all the benefits, what's the point of paying the bill to stay in the EU? Um, and there's a bit of naivety amongst the British, if I may say so. Many, and I say that as an Australian and British dual national, some in Britain still hark back to the old days of the colonial empire and think that Nigeria, Australia, New Zealand will come running back into the mother country's open arms and everything will be great in the Commonwealth again. And Britain seems to have forgotten that over the last 40 years things have moved on. And think about it this way. Britain now is going to be an independent island off the northwest coast of Europe without any colonies for the first time since the Romans left London in 400 AD. And Britain hasn't quite understood that independent means alone. So should that be a problem for Britain? Mm. Look, I think it really will be. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, Britain is going to lose some economic activity. Now, will it be a small amount, a medium amount or large amount? No one really knows yet. But at the very minimum, some financial services companies have said that they've got to go to France or Germany or Ireland to set up post-Brexit because some of the European investment laws don't allow you to invest outside the European Union. So those companies must move into, or at least those investment products must move back into the European Union. And some in Britain say, well, that's okay because we'll replace that EU trade with trade with the rest of the world, particularly the Commonwealth countries like Nigeria and Australia. And I hate to remind them of this, a lot of trade from the Commonwealth into Britain is because Britain is the front door to Europe. Once you land your goods or services in Britain, you're now in the customs union in Europe. But once Britain leaves the EU, they're no longer the front door to Europe. Why would Nigeria or Australia send their goods to Britain first and then go to France and Germany? So actually, rather than a spike in trade with the Commonwealth, I think what you're going to see is a downturn of trade with the Commonwealth as those businesses and countries that invested and traded with Britain because Britain is the front door to Europe will look for a new front door because Britain is slamming that front door closed. So if you combine the, the impact of the financial services industry that has to leave to Europe and the impact of other world trade that trades with Britain because it's the front door to Europe now having to find another front door, you've then got to start to ask, where does Britain's net increase in foreign trade come from? And you've already seen Britain get poorer. The British pound is about 20% lower now. In other words, everyone in Britain is 20% poorer on a global scale than they were a year ago. And you've already seen Britain go from the fastest growing economy in the European Union to the slowest growing economy in the European Union. We're only just now beginning to feel the impact of Brexit, and Brexit hasn't even happened yet. Hmm. 
Well, let's leave it at that for now. Andrew McLeod, a visiting professor at the Policy Institute, King's College, London. We appreciate your analysis on the world now. Thank you.